Good morning. We gather to celebrate the first Sunday of Lent and our Mass is offered for the people of God. So let us gather then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. As we come together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant, that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never become a flood, destroy all flesh. The word of the Lord. Your paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Your make paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness for those, those who keep, keep your, covenant. your covenant. Make me to know your paths, O Lord, to teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Your, your paths, paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. covenant. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Your, your paths, paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness, and faithfulness for, those for those who keep, who keep your, your covenant. covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble in his way. Your, your paths, paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness, and faithfulness for, those for those who keep, keep your, your covenant. covenant. <laughs> A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteousness, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. In former times, these did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through the water, baptism, which is prefigured, now save you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus was baptized, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading and the second reading today, we hear of the covenant that God makes with, Moses, uh, with Noah. And it's not the first covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham. God made a covenant with Noah. God makes a covenant with Moses. God makes a covenant with us. Now, each one of the covenants has a sign to it, something attached to it that is a constant reminder for us. And during the season of Lent, you and I are invited to become reflective to reflect upon things, to look at things in a new and a wondrous way. And so one of the things I want to do, and I always have kind of fun with this because, you know, when the cross is covered, that's a perfect time to ask people to reflect on the cross. So here's the thing. Think about your own cross at home, your own crucifix at home, or think about the crucifix that hangs here in the church. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Which foot is on top of which? Right foot on top, left foot on top. How many of you think right? Right would be the correct answer. Underneath the feet, is there a block of wood or not a block of wood? This one here has a block of wood under it. A lot of crucifixes that I find in people's homes don't. Okay. What does that tell you? There's two different pieces of theology there. The block of wood underneath his feet is a sign and symbol of assistance. He had something to push down on. That too would have been painful, but it would have lifted him up and released the tension on his chest. If you look at the hands of Jesus on the cross, are his thumbs pointed down or his thumbs pointed up? How many of you think it's up? Go home and check your crucifix. This one has the thumbs down, but many of the Franciscan crucifixes will have them up. One of the simple reasons is St. Francis had the stigmata in the palm of his hands. When he showed his hands, his thumbs were pointed outward. But if you've got nails through your wrist or through your hands, your thumbs pull down. So look at your crucifix. Where are the thumbs? Is it something that comes to us from the Franciscan? That's the sign of the stigmata in the world? The people like St. Francis were willing to suffer like Christ or take on the suffering of Christ joyfully? Or is it about the pain and the suffering that he had? You look at the, the crucifix, you look at the corpus, where is he stabbed? Left side, right side. And the right side is correct. It's kind of interesting when you go into the school because the kids look at it, right, and they get this mirror problem and they think it's on the left side, on his right side, and blood and water pour from the side. But on the corpus that you have, is it covered with blood? Is it gory? Or is the body clean of all blood except on the side? If you look at a Jesuit or an older Franciscan um, crucifix, one of the first things you'll notice is they're incredibly gory because they're inviting us to reflect upon the suffering, the pain, the anguish, 
that Jesus went through for our salvation, what he went through so that we would be freed of our sins, that we would be forgiven. That was the greatness of his suffering, which then invites us to reflect upon our own suffering and unite our suffering with that of Christ, because ours is nothing compared to what he went through. If you're one of those people and your crucifix is one of those where there's hardly any blood at all, there's that invitation to reflect upon the purity of Christ. He was without sin, but he went to the cross, suffered and died for us. But he was without sin. How many of us can say that? The reality is none of us can say that because we are all, all sinners in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. When you look at the crucifix, is Jesus' head down or is it up? If you have one of the crucifixes where his head is lifted up, you're focused on the Gospel of John. It is accomplished. And that oftentimes is called the funeral crucifix. And it would be given out at a funeral service because it is accomplished. The person is with Christ. Most crucifixes have Jesus with his head down. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And we have the other gospel that invites us to reflect upon that whole sense of abandonment that Jesus would have felt on the cross. Where's my father? In the midst of his suffering, his humanity comes through. As compared to John, where is it is accomplished, the Father and I are one, and we have accomplished what we set out to do, the salvation of the human race. So when you look at the crucifix, it has all of the symbolism attached to it. And when we sit before it, and many of you were raised with prayer before the crucifix, but when you sit before it, do you actually look at it and think about the symbolism that is contained in that very, very simple image of Christ on the cross. And of course, the neatest part of it is the sign of the covenant. A number of years ago, this song came out, and I always thought it was really, really cool because it initially was supposed to come out as a gospel hymn. It actually came out more in the country realm. Some of you might even know it. Love can build a bridge. Well, when we look at the crucifix, what we see is the sign of the symbol, or the symbol of the covenant. Love can build a bridge between us and God. And the love that builds a bridge between God and us is the love of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died on the cross for our salvation. We find the symbols of this covenant in the Eucharist. We find the symbols of the covenant in the word of God. But when we look at the crucifix and we see his arms outstretched, the desire to welcome us in. And not just some, not just a few. Arms outstretched for all of us. An invitation to be drawn in to the mystery of eternal life. The new covenant. Yes, he made a covenant with Abraham. Yes, he made a covenant with Noah. Yes, he made a covenant with Moses, but he made a covenant with you and me. And that greatest symbol of that covenant is when you're staring at that crucifix. As those arms opened wide are for you and for me, for all of us. He suffered and died for your salvation, for my salvation. He suffered and died to take away your sins. He suffered and died to take away my sins. Am I returning the love to him in the manner that he has loved me? The next time you find yourself sitting in front of a crucifix, take the time to really study it. Take the time to really reflect, what am I seeing here? And of course, we have the tradition. We can cover our statues and crosses from the beginning of Lent to Easter, or from the fifth Sunday to Easter. Personally, I prefer all of Lent. 
is all of a sudden, how many of you, when I was asking the questions, look towards the cross? When you walk in here and the cross is covered, it makes you stop and think, what am I missing? What's not there? Maybe next time, you'll look a little deeper. I'll finish with one unique thing about the cross that's here, and you won't see it till Easter, but on the stomach of Jesus Christ is the face of a child. Let's stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed together. And so let us tell each other what it is we believe as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Approaching the throne of our Heavenly Father, let us offer our prayers for the Church and the world. For the Church, May the Lord guide and protect her in proclaiming the kingdom of God to all. We pray to the Lord. For those who serve in public office, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in working to protect the most vulnerable, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. For those burdened to the point of despair, may God's grace poured out upon them, strengthen and uphold them. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord's presence here in word and sacrament open our hearts more fully to the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. For all Christians, may we accept our call as sons and daughters of God through the sacrament of baptism to be lived in holiness and service, witnessing the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, May they soon rejoice with all the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord Hear our prayers, God our Father, as we turn to you, the source of all goodness. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Consider you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, of my iniquities. Cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated, through his fast, the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the bishops in your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. make our communal proclamation of faith, the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. There is one reminder. We have confessions every Saturday in Lent from 1 till 3 p.m. at both churches, St. Basil's and Assumption, uh, and also Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. during adoration here at Assumption. Other options are listed in the bulletin. Please check those out. Have a wonderful and blessed week. God bless you all.